everyone and welcome back to True Crime and Feline. For my subscribers, thank you for joining me once again. I really appreciate your support. If you are new here, my name is Brandy and every Friday I bring you a true crime case or mystery with one or more of my 14 felines. This week's case takes place in 1920 in North Dakota. Almost an entire family, including a 13-year-old boy who was hired help for the farm, was brutally murdered. The only survivor was a small eight-month-old baby. And unfortunately, she was too young to say what happened. This case eerily reminded me of another video I did where a family was brutally taken out by their own father. This case was sort of solved, but there's a lot of speculation that maybe the wrong person went to prison. So let's get started. Jacob and Beta Wolf were German immigrants who immigrated to North Dakota in the very early 1900s. Jacob was born April 18th, 1879, and Beta was born April 15th, 1885. Both their families immigrated to North Dakota in the United States in the early 1900s, and their families knew each other. So, Jacob and Beta ended up marrying in 1905. They ended up having six daughters. There was Bertha, who was 12, Maria, who was 9, Edna, who was 7, Lydia, who was 5, Maria, who was 3, and then baby Emma, who was 8 months old. They lived in Turtle Lake, North Dakota, which at the time only had about 400 inhabitants. Jacob bought a farm and he turned this farm into one of the most prosperous farms in the area and his family was thought of very fondly in the community. Jacob had no enemies per se. There was some friction between him and a neighbor, but nothing anyone thought out of the ordinary. However, Jacob did mention one time to a few men that he kind of hung out with in the community that he became fearful of his life due to this conflict with this neighbor. The men really thought nothing of it because the conflict seemed to be minor and, and the whole thing was trivial. So trivial, in fact, that none of the men even knew which neighbor Jacob was talking about. That is until the date of April 24th in 1920. A man named John Kraft was driving past the wolf farm, and John Kraft was sort of Jacob's best friend. He noticed as he drove past the farm that the clothes out on the clothesline had been the same clothes that have been there for a couple days. And he also remembered that Jacob had borrowed a tool from him, so he thought he would just stop and check in on the family since he hadn't either seen nor heard for them in a couple days. John pulled up to the farm and right away he noticed that the barn door was open, so he thought maybe Jacob or the children were out there feeding the animals. So he peeked into the barn. There, he was actually very shocked to see his best friend Jacob and two of his daughters dead covered in blood. In the corner of the barn and somebody had partially covered them with dirt and hay, and some of the pigs have been kind of munching on the bodies. John immediately ran to the house to check on the rest of the family. When he got there, he went into the kitchen, and in the kitchen, he noticed that the trap door to the cellar was open. He walked up to the cellar trap door, he peeked in, and unfortunately, he saw the rest of the family all brutally, again, bloodied and dead and at the bottom of the cellar, including a hired hand boy, he was 13, named Jacob Hoffer. So there was a total of five bodies in the cellar. John was obviously freaked out and he went to leave to call the authorities when he heard a baby crying. He went into his small side bedroom where he saw Emma in her crib. She was only eight months old. She was very weak from hunger and, and the house was drafty, so she was cold. But thankfully, she was alive. 
So John grabbed Emma and dropped her off with her aunt and uncle that lived close by, and then he went to town and made a long-distance call to the authorities in Washburn, North Dakota. Officials hurried to Turtle Lake, and an investigation began. Sheriff Old Stefford would actually lead the investigation from the field. The attorney general would lead the overall investigation and would end up calling in other investigators. But to start off with, Sheriff Stufferud sort of had a inkling that the killer may return to the scene of the crime. So he decided to stay the night on the farm that night. Now, Sheriff Stufford would have company as he stayed at the house. Along with him were three men from the community. One was Emmanuel Hoffer, who was the relative to Jacob Hoffer, who was actually related to Beta Wolf. Jacob Hoffer, the hired hand, was actually Beta's nephew. And then there were two young men by the last name of Bossert, who were also Beta's relatives, brothers. So they stayed all night at the farm and nothing seemed to happen. It wasn't until the early morning hours, Emmanuel Hoffer decided that he was hungry and he was gonna go home to his farm and get some breakfast. The two Bossert boys would go with him. So they all three got in Emmanuel Hoffer's car and they took off to Emmanuel's farm. Sheriff Stufferud would stay behind. About 5.30 a.m., another car was heard approaching the Wolf Farm. Sheriff Stufford hid in the house and watched the car approach. <clears throat> and a man got out of the car. Do you have to have your tail right in front of the camera? A man got out of the car and started walking around the farm with a purpose. He first went to the window of the house and, and he peeked inside the house. He then headed towards the barn. That's when Sheriff Stuffera decided to confront the man to see what he was doing. As the man started going towards the barn, Sheriff Stuffera stepped out of the house and called out to the man, and it obviously scared him. He didn't think anybody was there, obviously. He asked the man his name, and the man stated his name was Henry Lawyer. Now, Henry Lawyer actually lived very close to the Wolf Farm, and he was considered a neighbor. When Sheriff Stufferud found out how close that Henry was to the wolf's farm, there was kind of a hill, and Henry lived at the top of the hill where he could clearly keep an eye on the wolf farm and could suspiciously clearly see if somebody was at the farm or had left. By the way that the sheriff scared Henry, It was obvious that Henry thought nobody was at the farm anymore and probably saw Emmanuel and the Bossarts leave. The sheriff talked with Henry for a while and asked him what he was doing at the place. Henry really didn't have a straight answer and kind of talked in a circle and the whole time he had his hand in his front suit coat pocket and would not remove it. As the conversation went on between the sheriff and Henry, the sheriff became very suspicious of him. After a while, Emmanuel and the Bossarts returned to the farm to bring breakfast to Sheriff Stuffered, and that's when the official investigation continued. Now, Henry Lawyer, however, would stick around the entire time on the farm as they were checking things out. By then, the sun was up, and everybody was kind of milling about the farm. Strangely, Henry just blurted out to the group, why don't we go egg hunting in the barn? Which seemed a little strange to do that at this particular time in this particular situation. The group didn't say much, but one of the Bossert boys who just wanted to get away from everything said, I'll go with you. And so the investigation continued why Henry and the Bossart boy went to the barn. The sheriff thought this was weird, but just kind of let it go. When Henry and the Bossart boy got to the barn, they started searching the hay for eggs. Henry ended up finding a nest and pointed it out to the Bossart boy and said, there's some, go over there and get them. As the Bossart boy had his back to Henry and he said he bent over to get the eggs, Henry suddenly said, hey, look what I found here. The Bossart boy turned around to see Henry kind of 
getting into the hay a little bit. Are you biting me? The Boss Art Boy stated that Henry kind of moved some hay around and then came out with a handful of shotgun shells that were expended. So the two men would go back to the sheriff and show them the shotgun shells that they found. At this point, everyone noticed that Henry no longer had his hand in his pocket like he did before. Sheriff Stufford actually was suspicious as well because he stated that he had already searched the barn thoroughly and where Bossart and Henry stated they found the shotgun shells said he would have easily found them because he already searched that area. As the days went on and an investigation continued, they would try to track down all these leads, follow any leads that would come in, but everything seemed to kind of go cold. The community would, would come up with $2,000. So two 1,000 reward posters were put all around the town about information leading to the arrest of whoever did this to the Wolf family. The community itself became on edge as the days and weeks wore on. They thought a killer or killers were on the loose and it was very common for the farmers to sit up at night with a shotgun guarding their family and their property. A couple weeks later, searching a swampy area not far from the wolf farm, they found what they deemed the shotgun that committed the crime. It seemed to be just kind of thrown in a swampy area and not very well hidden. So they were able to take the gun and they started searching for the owner. However, they even by calling the manufacturer, the manufacturer didn't even have that gun serial number on file, so finding the owner was completely unsuccessful. The investigators shifted their focus to see if maybe there was a motive for the murders. At first they thought maybe the Wolf family was targeted due to their very prosperous farm. However, they found a safe in the house that was not really hidden and it had several hundred dollars in it and nobody had even touched it so they could they ruled out theft and all the betas and the daughter's jewelry were not touched either however in sheriff stefford's mind there is one person that kept coming up over and over as a suspect and that was henry lawyer what he found out from neighbors is that Jacob Wolf and Henry Lair kind of had some bad blood between them, and this is probably the neighbor that Jacob was talking about to his fellow friends. So one of the issues that kept coming up between the men was that Henry would let his cows just wander, and sometimes they would wander onto Jacob's farm. Jacob had a couple dog, herding dogs that were very well trained and he would allegedly sick the dogs on the cows to get them off his property. One such occasion, one of the dogs bit one of the cow's legs, it became infected and according to Henry, ruined the cow. Others had told Sheriff Stufford that Henry would constantly gossip about Jacob's private life as well. So it was obvious that these two men just did not get along. So about a week after the family's bodies were found, they held a funeral for the entire family on the Wolf Farm. There were eight coffins lined up in a row, starting with Jacob Wolf, Beta, their five daughters, and of course Jacob Hoffer, the hired hand. The wolves were actually liked so much and this crime got so much attention, over 2,500 people showed up for the wolf's funeral. And of course, in the crowd of this many people, Henry Lair came out to pay his respects as well. People say that Henry expressed grief, but allegedly also insisted that the coffin's lids be taken off so he could say goodbye to his late neighbors and people thought that was odd this was later refuted as henry and the relatives of the wolves knew about their feud and they were not on speaking terms so even if henry would have asked for the coffins to be open the relatives of the wolf family they would have dismissed his request and completely ignored him it was stated later that the coffins were open because the preachers were giving the bodies their last rites and that was a common thing back then 
Now, while a funeral was going on, authorities had sent a couple investigators to Henry's farm because his wife and children did not attend the funeral. The authorities ended up talking to Henry's daughter. She confirmed that her father was gone on April 22nd, the day they believed that the Wolf family was murdered, but she didn't know where her father was and couldn't say. Authorities decided to bring Henry in for formal questioning on May 11th a couple weeks after the wolf murders. Now, Henry would stay strong and would say that he was completely innocent for much of the interrogation. He spent days locked up in police custody and then being pulled out for interrogation. The authorities end up taking pictures of the crime scene and kept thrusting them in Henry's face. And after a couple days, he finally cracked. Henry would break down and make the following confession. Now, Henry stated that on the day of April 22nd, he went to the wolf farm to confront Jacob about his injured cow. And he wanted Jacob to either compensate him for the vet bill or give him another cow just to make the situation right pretty much. Henry said an argument ensued over the two men. At that point, Jacob went into the house and Henry followed, still arguing. Jacob ended up pulling a double-barreled shotgun from his room and pointed it at Henry, stating him that he needed to leave the property. In the kitchen was Jacob's wife, Beta, and Jacob Hoffer, the hired farmhand. Henry said he grabbed the gun and the two men scuffled over it. The gun then accidentally fired both barrels. One bullet hit Beta and one bullet hit Jacob Hoffer, and they both died instantly. With the shock of everything going on, Jacob ended up letting go of the gun and Henry ended up holding the gun. At that point, Jacob fled the house and headed for the barn. Henry stated he grabbed some shotgun shells from the shelf, reloaded the gun, ran outside and shot at Jacob, hitting him in the back. Henry stated after that he was sort of in a fog and he doesn't know why he just didn't walk away at that point, but he ended up making sure Jacob was dead then he went to the barn where he saw Jacob's two daughters scream and run and hide in the barn. So he went in the barn, found them, shot them. Then he went back to the house where the rest of the daughters were and ended up shooting them except for Maria, who is three years old. He bludgeoned with an ax. When asked about Emma, the eight month old baby and why he spared Emma, he really didn't have an answer besides, I must have not went into the room she was in, so and hence forgot about her. He said he ended up covering the bodies with dirt and hay in the barn and shoving all the bodies through the trap door into the cellar in the house. He then opened some windows, closed and locked the door to the house and went back to his own farm. He stated the first two gunshots that took out Beta and Jacob Hoffer were accidents. After that, he's unsure why he just couldn't stop. Henry signed his confession and a couple days later, he was taken to court. He pleaded guilty. The judge even asked him many times if he wanted to change his plea, if he stood by his confession. He said yes, and he said, what gets me quicker to the penitentiary is the route I wanna go. So with that, Jacob was sentenced to a lifetime of hard labor. Within a couple days, Henry arrived at the penitentiary and a couple days after that, Henry would reach out and try to redact his confession. He stated that he was under duress during the confession. He was beaten and threatened to confess and that they threatened to turn him over to a murderous mob outside the jail station. They, he also stated that the cops that were interrogating him convinced him that the safest place to be because of this murderous mob would be in the penitentiary, which he could then appeal or repeal his confession when it calmed down. 
It was also stated that Henry's wife gave a sworn statement on the goings-on of the day of April 22nd where she said her husband and her were at their farm all day doing chores and working on the farm and she was pretty detailed about it. If you would like to see her full statement, I'll put a link in the description down below. Not only that, other things would come up where there were sort of issues where maybe Henry's confession did not match the evidence or that there was evidence that there were other people involved if Henry was involved at all. There was a paper clipping from February 1921, almost a full year after the murders. Then a new attorney general was now in place and he was reopening the wolf murder investigation. He stated that investigators were making secret trips out to Turtle Lake to the wolf farm and that more arrests would be coming. However, after that, nothing seemed to happen and it all went quiet. Politics come into question as well. You can call this a coincidence or not, but the attorney general at the time of that the murders happened was leading the investigation and his name was Bill Langer. He was who was credited with getting Henry to confess. So the day Henry confessed, it was that evening, that same evening, that Bill Langer would get the Republican Party nomination to become governor. There are other things as well, like the shotgun shells that Henry supposedly found in the barn did not match the gun that was found in the swamp that they stated was used for the murders. The issues with Henry's confession, here are some of them. The times don't really add up based on other statements that came from neighbors and community members. They thought the wolves were murdered just right after lunch, but Henry stated he was there before lunch. The supposed motive over this whole thing, the cow that got injured, neighbors discovered that the cow was actually injured six months before the murders, and the cow actually ended up being sold at auction for a very high price. So why would Henry still be mad after six months? There was also inconsistencies in Henry's story on how and where the family members were murdered. Henry stated that the gun accidentally fired and took out both Beta and Jacob in the kitchen. However, in the kitchen there's only one pool of blood. So unless they were standing in a line or right beside each other, that doesn't make any sense. Investigators actually think that Beta and, and, three, and the three daughters that were killed in the house were actually already in the cellar because they were canning for the season and that they were actually killed in the cellar and Jacob was the only one killed in the kitchen. They think this because Beta and her three daughters were sort of behind the ladder that goes down into the basement and if you were to just drop a body down it, there's no way it could land behind the ladder. And they also found blood spatter in the basement that would come from a blow of a shotgun or somebody being bludgeoned to death with an ax and not by simply pushing somebody down a trap door. Henry would appeal at least twice that I could find, but his appeal would be denied. Now his appeal was denied by the same judge that sentenced him, so some think that maybe there was some biased issues going on. Now Henry would end up dying in prison just five years after he was convicted due to complications from an appendicitis operation. After Henry went to prison, his wife was unable to support the family and keep it together. So unfortunately, their daughter and four of their sons were sent to an orphanage in Minnesota. Their youngest son, who was only one year old, actually got to stay with his mom. While up in Minnesota, one of their sons, who was only six years old, would be killed by being ran over by a farm wagon. Now, the daughter and the remaining brothers would end up returning to North Dakota in 1925 after their father died because their mother got remarried and was able to support the family again. 
As for the Wolf family, they were buried in one large grave that was eight feet by 26 feet. A headstone was installed for each of the family members and then one big large headstone was installed that read the murdered family. Baby Emma, the only survivor, was raised by her aunt and uncle who was Beta's sister and brother-in-law until she was in high school when unfortunately her aunt and uncle had passed away within a short time span of each other. She ended up raising the rest of their kids, marrying, having three kids of her own, and living a very long life. She passed away in 2003 at the age of 84. She always stayed around the Turtle Lake, North Dakota area. So what are your thoughts on this case? Do you think Henry Lawyer did it? Do you think he had accomplices? Do you think somebody completely different did it? Do you think this was just put on him to solve the case for political and social reasons? Do you think there was more than one killer? I'd love to hear what you think in the comments down below. Please don't forget to subscribe, give a like to this video if you like this content, and I will be back next Friday with my lazy kitties with another true crime case or mystery. Thanks guys! Bye!